Today I will tell you about AJ Proxy, one of the most widely used open source TCP and HTTP load balancers. We'll talk about what a load balancer is, why it's used and how to set it up, and also demo a few things. Concepts that we'll be discussing apply to all load balancers, so once you get a feel of AJ Proxy, you will be able to apply the same knowledge in other balancing solutions, both on-prem and in the cloud. My name is Philip. let's get started. Let's start with explaining what load balancer is and what issues it solves. So, load balancer is either a software on a server or a hardware appliance responsible for accepting and distributing network traffic across group of backend servers. Why is it needed? First of all, for scalability. A single server is capable of serving only a specific amount of traffic. Of course, if you need to process more data, you could scale the server up. That's called vertical scaling. Basically, you are adding more power to your current machine by increasing the number of CPUs, adding memory, increasing storage or network bandwidth. Unfortunately, you cannot scale the resources indefinitely. Also, at some point, a small increase in performance becomes very pricey. For that reason, to serve more traffic, the most common thing to do is scale out. That is, add more nodes so they can cope with traffic demand. Scale horizontally versus scale vertically is an often dilemma. Putting more powerful boxes keeps the architecture simple and easier to manage, but at the end of the day, if a large box fails, more client traffic is impacted, so it's usually better to have smaller servers, but more of them. For the nodes to receive traffic, we need a load balancer in front that will accept the traffic from our clients and efficiently distribute it among the nodes. Using a load balancer has additional interesting benefits. You gain high availability and fault tolerance. If one of your backend servers fails, or becomes unresponsive, the load balancer can redirect the traffic to other healthy nodes so that your clients won't even notice that something is wrong as other servers will serve their requests. Additionally, such architecture reduces system downtime. You can put your nodes into maintenance mode that will put them out of service and then perform an upgrade of your application. Load Balancer can also monitor resource utilization and direct the traffic to the backend servers based on various metrics like server response times or number of connections. This allows the traffic to be processed in the most optimal manner. Very common Load Balancer use case is SSL termination. Basically, we offload TLS connection at the Load Balancer so that individual backend servers don't have to manage encryption and can focus on serving requests. Let's quickly install AJ Proxy with apt install and go through its basic functionality. Every load balancer consists of a front-end layer that accepts incoming requests and a back-end layer that serves the requests. Let's open the AJ Proxy configuration file located in the etc AJ Proxy folder and define the most basic front-end. We'll start with the frontend keyword and then provide the frontend name. You can have multiple frontends. Next, we'll provide mode of operation. It can be either TCP or HTTP. In TCP mode, HA proxy will balance the traffic based on an IP address and port. That is layer 4. This mode is suitable for load balancing database traffic, SFTP, Redis or other services that operate on layer 4, that is IP address and port. This mode is also used to perform SSL pass-through. When you don't want for the balancer to offload the traffic, but want to send the SSL traffic directly to your backend servers. TCP mode is faster than HTTP. If you choose HTTP mode, that's obviously built to handle HTTP traffic, you will gain certain additional functionalities specific to HTTP, like balancing the traffic to different backend servers based on the domain name, URL, 
headers, cookies or SSL handshake metadata. I will show you some of those features in one of my future videos. Next thing is to define a listening address and port for the load balancer. You can either specify listening IP and port for every interface you want the service to listen on, or specify just the colon and port that will make the service available on all interfaces. Last thing to specify in this section is the default backend where the client's requests will end up. Okay, so we have our basic HTTP frontend defined, listening on port 8080, and all interfaces, and directing the traffic to my server's backend. Let's set up the backends. We'll start with the backend keyword and then the name for our backend. It needs to match with what we specified in the default backend field of the frontend section. Next, let's specify the first node of our backend. We'll do it by putting a server keyword, then the name we want to assign to our node, followed by IP and port of the listening service. Finally, let's ask AJ Proxy to reload its configuration. Now let's go to our node one and start our simple HTTP service. I will check if the service is working with CURL command. All looks good. Now let's go to our client machine and try to request the service over load balancer. Node one logs the source IP of the request that is our proxy IP and not the client IP. In other words, the load balancer accepts the connection from the client and then establishes a new connection to the backend. That's the reason we see the IP of the balancer as the source. In HTTP mode, it's possible to put the source IP in X forwarded for header field. Let's play a little bit with our new balancer. I'll run an HTTP load test with 10 requests per second. Dash C specifies the number of concurrent users, dash R indicates request per second, dash D is the test duration. Our node is receiving requests every 100 milliseconds. AJ Proxy has a very nice GUI with statistics. You can enable it by adding following lines to the configuration. I did add them already to save time. Basically, you gain a web GUI on port 8404 under stats URL and also a Prometheus exporter under metrics URL. Let me show you. Here you can see how many sessions hit our frontend and how many requests hit our backend, along with other health statistics. Because AJ Proxy exposes the Prometheus exporter, I did add it to the Prometheus configuration to scrape this endpoint. I've also added the default AJ Proxy graph in Grafana. This dashboard has tons of information. For example, the first panel shows you the amount of requests that go to the front end and number of replies from the back end along with their status codes. As you can see, we have exactly 10 requests per second, as that is how we set it up in the loader. Second graph shows incoming and outgoing bytes. There are many, many more graphs to explore. To make things more interesting, let's add two more backend nodes to the balancer and reload the configuration. Look what happened. We've gracefully increased the number of our backend servers, but our successful request rate dropped to about two and a half. Other requests erupt. The green band shows 200 OK responses and the red band shows 500 error responses. Why is that? In fact, it's to be expected as we have not started our HTTP service on node two and node three. I did put very short timeouts to simulate ideal condition. Usually the timeout values are much higher and the number of successful responses drops even more. Here we come to another important concept of load balancers, that is health checks. Health check is a mechanism where load balancer is probing the backend nodes if they are working correctly. If the balancer detects that the node is not working, it will remove it from the pool and won't direct the traffic to that node. Let's enable basic health check with check keyword and reload the configuration. Let's go to the status page. Node 2 and node 3 are marked down. Our service did recover and our node 1 is handling all the traffic. We are back on track. Let's start our service on remaining nodes. It started handling the traffic almost immediately. Please mind that the load balancer is probing failed nodes all the time 
and when it detects the node is back in service, it will put it back in the pool. We can see node 1 and node 2 serving traffic. As you can see, 5 sessions go to node 1 and another 5 sessions go to node 2. There are certain parameters related to health checks that you can fine tune. Inter determines the check interval, how often the balancer will be tested if the backend service port is open. It defaults to 2 seconds. Let's update it to 1 second. Fall defines how many checks can fail before the balancer removes the node out of the pool. Default is 3. Rise defines how many checks need to be successful prior to bringing the node back in the pool. Please mind that by default, the balancer will only send a SYN packet and expect SYN acknowledgement back and then reply with a reset. This type of check only validates if the port is open and does not check if the application in fact is serving requests. For HTTP, you can enable an application health check with the following options. First line enables HTTP health check instead of simple TCP half open. Second line sets the method to get and URI to slash. By default, it's an option method and not get. Now, let's go to node 3 that's not in service and enable the listener. With this more intelligent check, we are getting HTTP GET, but do not send a reply. So node 3 is still considered unhealthy. If we go to a healthy node and dump the traffic, we'll see that our node is getting HTTP GET slash and replies with 200 OK. AJ proxy identifies 200 OK as success and keeps the node in the pool. It's a common practice to have a dedicated URL that returns overall application health that is separate from the actual URL that's serving the traffic. Or even external agent that is a separate application that is monitoring the target application and communicating with the load balancer to decrease the amount of traffic or put the node in a maintenance mode. The last thing I'd like to show you are the load balancing algorithms. Let's make sure our application is enabled on all backend nodes. The default algorithm for most load balancers, including AJ Proxy, is called round robin. You don't have to explicitly define it, but let's add it anyway to the backend section. As you can see, every backend node serves the request in order. This algorithm is very fair and fast. Moreover, it supports weights. Let me show you. I will add weights to the nodes. By increasing the weight of node 1 to 2, this node takes two times more requests. It's possible to adjust the weight on the go. Round robin is one of the most commonly used algorithms, however, it has certain downsides. It does not rely on backend server load nor amount of established sessions. With short transactions, the load distribution is even, but for long-running sessions, the recommended algorithm is least connections, where the balancer checks which backend node has least sessions established and directs the request to that node. This is often used for connection to the database. Last load balancing algorithm I'd like to mention is load balancing by source IP. Let me update our backend. Now let's run a few requests. With this algorithm, when a client is coming from a specific source IP, it will be directed always to the same backend node. It's most often used in TCP mode when a client establishes multiple sessions and all need to talk to the same backend server. In HTTP, it's possible to achieve application persistent with the use of cookies by either using the cookie that the application is already using or injecting a new cookie by the load balancer. Let me show you the latter. We'll switch the load balancing method back to round robin and add a server ID cookie. We'll also add the cookie value for each node and reload the configuration. Now let's run a few requests. As you can see, the server is injecting a cookie in the reply. Now, if we send a reply back with a cookie set, we'll be directed to the same node. I'll just show you a very basic information about AJ Proxy. It's a really fantastic service. I recommend playing with it, 
as it will greatly help you in understanding other concepts in your Linux and cloud journey. In this series, we'll also talk about making a service highly available and also we'll discuss other products. It's good to know how they operate before going to Kubernetes and the cloud.